Hello and welcome back to the Sam Beast YouTube channel. My name is David Foxon and I am so happy that you've decided to join me today for another IT asset management related video. Now, today we're actually going to strip it back down to the basics and answer the question, the age old question, what exactly is software asset management? First of all, though, don't forget to like and subscribe on this video. And if you want to see more IT asset management, software asset management, hardware asset management, FinOps type content, then this is absolutely the place for you. So just hit subscribe to join us as we create even more ITAM content that hopefully uh, you find useful and can see some benefits in. What exactly is software asset management? Now, if I put some numbers around this that might scare you a little bit, you'll quickly realize and understand why we need to manage this software asset, software licensing thing. Gartner predicts that the software spend will actually increase by over 11%, that's 11.3 to be exact, in 2023. That's quite a significant increase. But what does that actually mean in terms of money? I hope you're sitting down for this one, okay? But Gartner are predicting that in 2023, the software spend will be nearly $88 billion globally. $88 billion. That's an 11.3% increase on 2022. $88 billion. That kind of spend requires management and expert skills to navigate your organization through the complex licensing metrics and the overall life cycle of your software assets. Basically, software asset management, or SAM, as you probably heard it referenced before, is the management of your valuable software assets throughout their life cycle within your organization or what the software vendor themselves have defined. Now that's all well and good, but what exactly is a software asset? Now this is typically defined as the software license that basically grants you permission to use that particular software for that number of installs or that number of users or that number of processes cores or for that length of time. So that permits you to use it within your organization. Straight away, full disclaimer, a software license does not mean that you actually own anything. You are just granted the rights to use it. You also can define the associated contract or support renewal as being a software asset as well. For example, if you've got a perpetual license, aka it does, the actual software itself doesn't have an end date. It's, it's evergreen and you can just keep using it but you are paying a yearly subscription to make sure that you're getting the latest patches and the latest updates, et cetera, then that additional contract can also be classified as a software asset. As that has a financial value around it, it needs to be managed and it also may need to be renewed. You can also classify install media. So, you know, XE files, for example, as being a software asset. This also needs to be managed to make sure that you are deploying the right version in addition that you have the licenses for that only certain people have access to that install media. So it's not just a crazy free for all out there and everyone can install any kind of software that they want because that's ultimately probably going to end up in a, a breach of compliance um, and probably uh, a large hefty uh, renewal or a fine if you were ever to be audited. It's also important to mention that with the EXE files as well, why it's considered a software asset is because obviously it's in this day and age, security is a big and important factor for any organization. So you need to make sure that any installers that you're using within your organization has the latest patches and security updates so that software isn't a backdoor to any viruses or anything that may infiltrate and have a really negative impact on you and your organization. Now, rewind back 10, 15, 20 years and retro, <laughs> we call it retro, retro software asset management would also have included the management of the physical media. So back in the day, that would have been a tape, it would have been a floppy disk, it would have been a CD. In some cases, it may have even been a USB or a dongle as well. I mean, if you've still got those lying about, you're still using software that has that physical install media, please, by all means, count that as a software asset. Make sure it's tracked, make sure it's logged, make sure it's secure, uh, and make sure that you know, you're know you managing that like you would the other elements of a software asset. So yeah, if back in the day you were managing all of that physical installs as well as the paper licensing information and contract information, nowadays a software asset also includes software as a service subscriptions. Now this is something that you're paying for on a yearly basis. This is typically on a per user licensing model as well. 
and this is also a software asset for you to manage. This has some different complexities as well compared to what it used to be because this has a different way of purchasing and also comes out of different budgets. So this is an operating cost. It comes out of something called OPEX, whereas previously if you had something perpetual, actually used it under CAPEX and done the depreciation and worked it against your fixed asset register, etc. So yeah, a new, new-ish uh, element of software asset management are your software as a service licenses and renewals and also your cloud renewals. If you've got software within the cloud, if you're bringing your own license, your own Windows server into the cloud, etc., that is another new form of a software asset that the ITAM team typically would be managing and optimizing. Software asset management or SAM requires a key blend of people, processes and technology. Now, people can relate to your ITAM team who are proactively going about managing these assets and the renewals, but also those that are using the software. Everyone that has a piece of hardware or a piece of software is a customer of ITAM. And in this case, you can't really operate an organization very well if you have absolutely no licensable software. But we're also talking about other key stakeholders involved in that actual software itself and the license. So you're looking at people that are doing the packaging, uh, the stakeholders that are doing the deployment, your finance and procurement team. So we're looking at the budgets and also, obviously, as I mentioned, the ITAM team who are doing that day to day management. But don't forget your end users are also a key stakeholder and a key player in this because they are responsible for following the processes. See, it all makes sense. It all links up. So the next blend are the processes. Now, you need to have some defined and some really structured processes to make sure that your customers and your end users are requesting and using software in the correct way that you're wanting them to do so. This makes sure that you're really optimizing your existing software assets and that you're doing proactive lifecycle management. This is really kind of like guardrails, right? So that you're, you're guiding people on how to request the software, how you're going to do the renewals, how you're going to do your internal optimizations how you're even going to retire that piece of software when it comes to its end of life. Your processes are ultimately your foundations for effectively managing your valuable software assets. And finally, technology. Every, technology is awesome. And the technology part within software asset management gives you that visibility and transparency on your inventory, basically. What software have you got out there installed? What version and edition it is? what laptops, desktops, servers, et cetera, have it installed, what cloud instances are running it, what users are proactively using the software, who's maybe not using it, who can you reclaim licenses from? Technologies are also really, really cool for actually managing the licenses themselves. Uh, you can upload them, import them into your software asset management tool, along with your accompanying contract information. And some tools actually give you an effective license position, aka you have got 10 licenses, and you are using nine of them. So therefore you've got one spare or you've got 10 licenses, uh, but actually you've got 500 users using it. And this is based on a per user basis. So uh, you've got some uh, risk uh, mitigation to be doing there. Maybe do an internal review and, and even technologies that aren't these super shiny, providing you usage and metering information. Even if you've just got visibility of your installs through an SCCM or a discovery tool, you can still do manual efforts to make sure that you're optimizing and also make sure that you are compliant. So managing your software assets is a real balancing act. Most software asset managers are encouraged to save money, uh, to optimize and uh, to come in under budget if they potentially can uh, and to make sure that all the renewals are done in a smooth and on time manner. You are expected to be doing this while also providing great customer service. So when people request a new license, that you can turn that around within three to five working days, for example, or if you haven't got any licenses that you go and procure some if it is a really critical need and they have full valid business justification for that license. Got that balancing act of trying to save money while also keeping your end users happy, while also trying to optimize, but also keep up to date with the latest licensing news, licensing changes that are gonna impact your organization, your SaaS subscriptions, your cloud environments, and what software is being held in there and also making sure that you are doing your renewals on time and that you are uh, fending off any external audits that may be coming your way. And this is exactly why I love software asset management because there's so many moving parts to keep going, so many plates to keep spinning and so many challenges uh, that software asset management can ultimately help an organization with. 
it's tough. There's no denying it. Getting that balancing act, getting it right is a real challenge and a real art. But when you nail it, when you get it spot on, it is incredibly valuable to any organization. And the rewards are just mwah. Whether that's great customer service, saving money on software, being compliant, fending off all those audits, it, it's so valuable to any organization. So in a nutshell, a very high level overview that hopefully you found useful. That is essentially what software asset management is. Now, I could do a video that's about 10 hours long going into even more detail on the benefits and what software asset management is. But in a nutshell, in a high level overview, uh, they are the key facts that you need to know about software asset management. If you enjoyed this video, I'd really appreciate a like and a subscribe, especially if you want to see more ITAM content, whether that's software asset management, hardware, FinOps, cloud, etc., SaaS even. Uh, I'd really recommend uh, that you hit that subscribe because we've got some awesome stuff coming. And yeah, thank you very much for your time. Hopefully we we'll see you next time here at the Sand Beast YouTube channel and uh, happy eye tamming.